Hello everyone, Kenji here at Life of Clay. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to my channel and please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you will be notified whenever I uploaded a new video. And in this tutorial, we will be making Giant Weta, the Nakrida Heterakanta. So come on, bring the clay on and let's begin. I started filing a 2mm aluminum wire to make it pointy. This will imitate the ovipositor that a cricket use in digging the ground to bury their eggs. Trim the wire and wrap with aluminum foil. Now start covering it with a thin sheet of clay and start shaping it. Adding her top segments called tergites. And the underside segments called sternites. Refining the segments a little bit and after that, let's do the first baking. And now we can start forming the thorax and the head. And I make sure all the segments are in correct counts for a better accuracy. Giant weta are endemic in New Zealand and protected by law because they considered at risk of extinction. This little barrier giant weta can weigh up to 70 grams and grow up to 3 inches and they are generally wingless. Now adding the top armor of the thorax, adding some of its texture using a very small ball tip tool. Shaping the head according to the reference and poking it for the antenna to be added later. Adding a small ball of clay for the eyes. Adding her legs first joints to the body called coxa. Poking them for the legs to be attached later. Adding more texture to the thorax and after that, we're ready for the second baking. Using a 1mm aluminum wire for the legs, trimming them and bending them accordingly. Drilling all the poke holes. I trimmed plastic bristles for her cersus part, antennae, maxillary pulp, and spines. Covering the leg wires with clay and shape them. Trim excess clay if necessary. Next is the hind jumping legs. I shaped the clay first and made an incision. Add to the wire and blend the seam.
poke the inner side of these legs for the tiny spines to be attached later. Smooth them with alcohol and bake. I borrow Flory's paper wrapping technique for the tibia part of the legs. Wrapping around a strip of tissue paper while brushing with glue. For paper will hold the tiny spines more better due to its fiber. Now that the glue dried, I pierce them with care, making sure I won't tear the paper. And again, I trim plastic bristles for its hind leg spines. I inserted them all the way through and bend them outward so as to imitate those huge alternating spines on her tibia. And also added those spines on the inner side of her hind legs. And to strengthen the paper and the band of each spines, I added epoxy resin and let them cure. And it's time for assembly. And for the painting process, I use Roshena as primer. For the second coat, I added a little bit of burnt shena and titanium white to the raw shena. The underside of her body is a bit lighter, so I added more titanium white. I added very thin shena mix with retarding medium on her thorax and tergites. I added black and burnt amber to burnt shena for all the darker areas of her body. Adding speckles on the legs. Painting the joints with aqua blue mixed with titanium white and burnt amber. Painting the eyes with burnt amber and black mix. For the third guide's color pattern, I added more black to the Shena mix. And finally, varnishing it with satin water-based polyurethane and gloss for the eyes. And 
that's it. The giant weta is done. Thanks for watching and hope you like all the techniques I use in this tutorial. Until next time, have a wonderful day everyone.